there was a blind fiddler living in the county of Lonford. And he would make his money by travelling from town to town playing his music for whoever wanted to listen, whoever wanted a dance. And he was especially beloved in Edwardstown. And it was the people of Edwardstown who immediately began to panic when they realised that they hadn't seen the fiddler in several months. Now, there was one man in Edwardstown, his name was Harry Stottle, and he thought he knew what had happened to the fiddler. You see, the fairies, they were often in the habit of kidnapping human musicians of particular skill to play for them in their hills and courts. And so Harry, he led an expedition up to the top of the nearby fairy hill known as Mount Award, where there was a hole in the top of the hill leading down into the fairy world. And so when he and his friends reached the top of the hill, Harry, he tied a rope around his waist and had his friends lower him down into the hole. When he reached the bottom, he untied the rope and he lit up his torch and he went to look for the fiddler. He needn't have bothered with the torch at all because after only a minute or so, he found himself in this huge, vast, glittering chamber, the most beautiful room he had ever seen in his life. And he could hear strains of sweet music. The sweetest, most wonderful fiddle playing he'd ever heard. And then he saw, sitting by the fire, was the blind fiddler playing that beautiful, gorgeous music. But sitting across from him, on the other side of the fire, was a woman. A gorgeous woman, with a radiant, beautiful skin, a silken gown, and hanging by her waist was big silver scissors. And laying on the floor by her chair was a huge sleeping hound. What? Are you doing in my home? said the woman. I've come to bring back my friend the fiddler, said Harry, and nothing is going to stop me in here. And the two of them fell to arguing. Harry demanding the return of his friend the fiddle player, the fairy woman shrieking and shouting that he would not be released. And all the while, the fiddle player, he sat still in the chair, still playing, but making no other motion than his hands across the fiddle. He did not tap his foot as he played, as Harry was accustomed to. He did not laugh and smile as he played, as Harry was accustomed to. He scarcely seemed to breathe. And all the while, while these two were shouting and roaring, arguing about his fate, he barely seemed to know they were there. Eventually, the fairy woman stood up and she hissed at Harry. You had better go before you wake my hound. Because if he wakes up, he will attack, and I will not be able to save you. And Harry, looking back and forth between the woman and the fiddle player, he thinks to himself, Would it even do him any good to be free of her? Would it even help him at all when he's in a state like this? And so he says to the fairy woman, Listen, I at least need some token to prove that I found him, to prove where he is. Can you not give me that at least? And she says, fine, I'll get you a token. And she takes the big silver scissors from her waist. And she goes and she cuts the finger off the fiddle player's hand. He doesn't scream in pain, he doesn't flinch. He barely even pauses in his playing. 
drawing the bow back and forth across the strings, spreading his spraying blood everywhere, dripping all over his lovely fiddle, all over his clothes. And still he didn't respond at all. The fairy woman wrapped the finger up in paper and gave it to Harry who stuffed it in his pocket. He went then to the hole where he had come in and he shouted out for them to pull him back up. Grabbing hold of the rope, tying it around his waist, he was pulled back up, back to the top of the hill. He explained what had happened, that he had found the fiddle player. But nobody would believe him until he pulled the finger out of his pocket and showed them.